Welcome back to Royals Franchise. 75 and 52 is where we left off. 7 and 3 in our last 10 as we cruised past the All Star game and the trade deadline into a very productive August. We have, of course, the end of this month as well as September before we make our inevitable playoff run. At 75 and 52, something drastic would need to happen for us to not be in the playoff picture. We are currently number one for the AL wild card with the Astros close behind, the Guardians, Yankees, Orioles kind of all fighting for that third spot. Although, of course, the Guardians are looking pretty good right now. Yankees three and a half games back. Orioles could do it. I honestly think the Angels and below are probably out, but crazier things have happened. We'll have to see what happens. In the National League, you have the Phillies, Giants, and Pirates fighting for those wild card spots. You can predict the division winners based on who is not here. I would predict that the Dodgers, Braves, probably near the top, Mets all the way down at the bottom of the leaderboard there for the standings. However, everyone was asking in the last episode, Bango, no draft picks. Well, show us some draft picks. Maybe I don't want to. You know why? Because you remember our 94 to 99 potential player? Well, here he is. Daniel Crowell. He is a 67 overall. Fantastic. With 87 potential. Where do I move? That's actually a good spot here. There's not really a spot. All right. Well, he's injured. And they said that it would affect his potential end overall. His 94 to 99 potential is now actually just an 87. I actually did think I showed this in the last episode. I may have accidentally cut it out. But I've seen these before, so I'm not shocked by this. I, I could have sworn I did in the last episode. Now, things are not all bad. He's still good. 77 stamina, 70 hit per nine, 62K per nine. Home runs per nine is a bit low. Pitching clutch is low. But he probably will have a pretty quick path to the majors. If you look at our current starting pitchers, if you put a 67 overall in the mix, that's right up there with our top prospect, Chris Bates, who is four years younger. That's not lost on me. But he's as good just the potential maybe is a little bit lower than what we thought it would be. However, we make up for it with Ton Caballero, another starting pitcher. This one re uh, fresh out of high school, 18 years old, 92 potential, but only a 58 overall. He's got 35 hit per nine, 34K per nine. Home run per nine's great. He's got a really long way to go. Of course, five pitch mix, four seam cutter, slider, curveball, circle change. And I... I guess in franchise, they didn't know this. You can't even see pitch break with uh, clicking the right stick like you can in Diamond Dynasty, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. Our third pick was another starter. We had four in a row. 96 potential for Roger Marrero. However, he is already 23 years old. Hit per nine is bad. K per nine, walk per nine all look pretty good. You can see those ratings there. He's got a cutter, slider, sweeping curve, changeup mix. Very bizarre for a, what looks to be more of a strikeout guy with that K per nine being higher than the hits per nine. His pitch mix would say, probably not going to get a ton of strikeouts, but maybe, you know, really utilize that off-speed stuff and pitches backwards to everybody. I don't know, kind of an interesting thing, but he's also 23 years old already. So is he ever going to realize that 96 potential? It's unlikely. And if he does, it's going to take a heck of a long time for him to get there. Thomas McCallum is one of the guys, guys we take a chance on. Didn't get as lucky this year as we did last year. 84 potential, but only a 51 overall. Now, he does throw gas. 98 base on the four seam. That's faster than Cole Reagan's. 96 two seam. 91 on the slider, 84 on the change. The per nines are very, very bad. So he needs to come a long way. But the stuff, if you look at the velo and the break, the stuff is as nasty as you're ever going to find from a player. And at 6'5", 218, he looks like frontline starter potential. But his 84 potential says somewhere in the middle of the rotation, maybe at the back end if he gets in. And our highest potential pick was 99 potential. 
I took another chance on this guy. His scouted potential was 90 to 98, so we knew it would be very high. It's actually outside of that range. It's a 99. My big concern, not only is he already 22, he really isn't good at anything. His hitting, the bat, is not very good. He was supposed to be a defensive first speed type of guy, and that stuff looks okay, but it's not amazing. So again, 99 potential. We can get stoked about that. But I don't think he's ever going to even be close to that. 63 to 96 potential on Franklin Ruiz ends up being 79. Relief pitcher for nines are pretty good already. Don't mind that at 57 overall. And then Tim Boyer, our last picks already is 64 overall, but only 77 potential. He's only got 23K per nine. Again, that's strikeout per nine. How likely you are to strike somebody out. And he's really going to be a big pitch to contact guy. That you're talking about maybe a four or five starter in the rotation at some point. I would say with him, you know who I see with him? Look at his per nines there in the top right. This is who he reminds me of. And that is good old Jordan Lyles. <laughs> Great. We drafted Jordan Lyles in the draft. That's going to be so sick. Let's get so excited about that. This just might be the MLB The Show experience. This is two years in a row now that I'm not absolutely stoked in my class. Yes, the potential's high, but I keep drafting these older players that I don't think are really going to amount to a whole lot. There could be something there. It's going to take a while on some of these guys. And that is baseball, right? I get that. We'll have to see. But Daniel Crowell, we took a chance on an injured player and... I don't think it's going to pay off. Jude Torero was another option. I looked at him. I remember being, being quite close on him. 94 potential. Hit per nine is terrible. Fielding is a three. I don't think I've ever seen something so low. It's just tough to visualize these guys being really good at the next level. I, I really struggle to find it. Joey Burdick looks very good as predicted. 21 years old. B potential but can absolutely mash. He's already a 75 overall. I mean, the A's might call him up ASAP. They also got Pablo Mascara, who I think we looked at. He looks pretty good already. Throws gas at 99, 95 cutter, 91 slider. Brian Park, we also looked at. I feel like the A's took everybody I was actually interested in. And someone let me know in the comments, what happens when these players go unsigned? Did they just disappear? Are they free agents? Where do they go? Jeffrey Kennedy, I would have loved to get to us. He didn't make it, obviously. 89 potentials, pretty good. 21 years old. 72 overall, but the per nines, yeah, again, look great. Pitch mix is a little concerning. I guess that matters more in real life than it does here in the game, probably. His number one pitch is a running fastball. That's just a fastball with more arm side movement. Run means working, righty righty means working towards the right handed batter. As, you know, towards the inside of the plate as opposed to across the plate. That's what run means. Cut is moving the other way. Uh, I know people ask me to explain baseball terms all the time. Running fastball just means what, like arm side movement, which means right moving to the right or left moving to the left if it's a lefty pitcher. But uh, yeah, I mean, he looks very solid right away. Chauncey Pryor at third base. I think we looked at him. Yeah, but both of these guys look pretty good. Great potential. We definitely considered Becerra as well. 57 overall, 94 potential. But it, it's tough with these, and his pitch mix looks disgusting. But it's tough with these younger guys. It's like, how good will they actually end up being? I really don't know. 74 overall catcher? Bernard Grace can play. Now, Rich Norcross would have been the player we took had I not been prioritizing pitching. He's a 69 overall. Nice. Nice. Great contact. Speed's already good. Fielding's not terrible. And the power is not awful either for an 18-year-old. He looks very, very good. My big hang-up on him was the potential. 75 to 90 on our first guy. He only ends up having 81 potential. What is the ceiling on him? Is he ever going to be all that good? I would say yes, because the contact's already so high. The vision, the discipline already so high. I don't know if he's really going to hit for power or play good defense, but he's a really solid player. Cardinals top pitch, Barney Hand. And I actually think that used to be a problem. Barney was getting handsy with the kids. 
and they had to shut that down. Christopher Burnett was another player I wanted to take a chance on. 18-year-old with a max of 99 potential. Ends up being 94. I think he was just off the board by the time we picked again. Pitch mix is interesting. Might have missed out on one there. But as far as generational prospects go, I've still yet to see one. You know, we might get a player to a year in the 70s for overall. I'll tell you, Kerry Barton looks pretty good. But I don't know that these guys, and, and I think this could be a flaw of MLB The Show. I don't think most of these guys really ever turn into all that much. We did pretty well for potential. But to be fair, we had scouted potential pretty high. Just, you know, I don't know that the quality of player we got is really going to be a big impact guy for us. Any of these guys, really. You'll have to let me know down in the comments section below. Roger Marrero, 65 overall with 96 potential. Seems good, but he, everyone that has a good overall and good potential is old. And it's tough for me to visualize a guy who's at 65 overall with 34 hits per nine and 55 K per nine. How can I send that guy out on the mound? They will get murdered. What is his timeline when he's 27? He might pitch for us. He might be okay. His overall might be an 80, but the per nines are so bad. I don't know. That's that's the draft. But the story we have going the rest of the way, can MJ Melendez win the MVP? He's cold right now, apparently, so that doesn't bode well for him. Average down to 322, 388 on base, 619 slug. OPS still over 1,000. It's amazing still. Again, explaining these stats. Average is how often you get a hit. I would say on base is how often you get on base. It's out of a thousand. So if you got up and you got a hit 10 out of 10 times coming up to the plate, you'd have a 1.000 average. No one ever has done that in, in an extended sample. So this just means he gets on base or gets a hit 32.2% of the time. You move the decimal place over a couple of points there. On base, he gets on base 38.8% of his plate appearances, or at bats, technically. Um, or no, plate appearances. At bats is factored in average. Average, this is a little bit interesting if you don't know baseball a ton, but not affected by walks. Uh, it, it's not affected by sack flies. That means if you hit it and get an out, but a run comes in, that doesn't count as getting out <laughs> somehow. Uh, slugging is how many bases per at bat, essentially. So he averages a little bit more than half of a base every time he comes up to the plate, which is pretty awesome, but that's a very interesting way of looking at it. And then on base plus slugging is OPS. How often you get on base, how much damage you do. So for baseball fans, probably cringing at that obvious explanation, explanation, but there are a lot of people that don't know. So just on base plus slugging, think 700, which would be 0 0.700 is about league average below that is bad typically 800 is very solid you'd be very happy with that 900 is you got a really really good player a thousand plus mvp best player in the league type stuff so mj melendez is in that conversation right now and i think we will start out with a player locked moment mj melendez against the flame throwing paul skeens Okay, should be a good challenge for us. Let's hop in. Let's see what we can do. And here we go. The number one overall pick in the draft. He actually throws a sinker in real life as well. Four seam slider, change up, and cutter here in MLB The Show. And he is just disgusting. He's dominating AAA right now in real life. Surprise, surprise. But that's not here in the game. Two years later... At the end of the 2025 season, we are trying to make a playoff push. And MJ Melendez is trying to make an MVP push. He's falling out of the race a bit. Jordan Alvarez, Aaron Judge, crushing it in the AL. MJ Melendez is drilled! Paul Skeens upstairs with the cutter. And that really ran in. But we'll take the base runner. 2-2 to Nelson Velasquez. See what he can do. And he strikes out. Now Nolan Gorman. 3-2, two, two outs. We're going to run on the pitch. And a gapper will definitely score Melendez. And here's a ground ball to O'Neal Cruz. Really strong arm. And he throws it out of play. E6 on O'Neal Cruz. Maybe MJ Melendez running in front of him. Screwed up with the throw there. 
And now we bring up our designated hitter, J.D. Martinez, hitting 271. 0 1 to him. This is going to be put in play. And that is ripped to right, but right at the right fielder. And no runs are scored here. A couple of base runners. Couldn't bring him in. Runner on second. Nobody out for MJ Melendez here in the field. And he'll get an opportunity, of course. No surprise there. And he actually had a great play in real life today as I record this against the Mets. Gunned down a runner at the plate. Which, of course, he did. He's a former catcher. He's got a cannon of an arm. And somehow that's a strike. Down and in. Extremely well located from Skeens. And he's just going to go fastball down and in, down and in, down and in. I'm not ready for it. Come on, MJ. And MJ is hit again! Charge the mound! That's twice now! In two at-bats, our best hitter of the season has been drilled. What's going on? Figure it out. When are benches going to clear? He, Brian Hayes, is not going to screw up the throw, though. MJ Melinda is stranded again. Why do they keep throwing at my guy? It's out of control. You want to hit him again, Paul? Runner in scoring position. We're down by two now. It's fastball down and in. I mean, pick a different pitch, idiot. Keeps getting me. Hit that one fairly well, though. Deep to the left center field gap. Center fielder with time. And we'll have the runner advance. It's Bobby Witt Jr. And we tie it up 2-2. Two two. J.D. Martinez with an RBI single. And they are painting against MJ Melendez. Lefty, lefty now. But MJ Melendez has really, really improved against lefties this season. And zoom camera is killing me. I really... I'm not thinking that any of these are strikes. And they're all falling in. Forced to swing at that one. I think we're a little bit out in front. Strikeout for Melendez. It's really, it's a, it's tough to come back from 0-2. We almost got lucky by getting hit the first couple of ABs. This one roped. They can play it first. Mm. Well, all right. RBI double for Michael Garcia. Runner takes off for third. And Michael Garcia is safe. I thought he was going to be out. You can't take the bat out of the hands of MJ Melendez here with two outs. That's crazy. He's just been so good this year. Need a hit. Ball's going to be popped out to left field. Got a little bit deeper than I expected, but... MJ uh, Melendez 0 for 2 with two hit by pitches. But we do win the game. Michael Garcia 2 for 4 the double. As Frankie Montas goes 3 innings. Strikes out 2, allows 1 hit. He didn't get the start. Did I take Montas... Out of the rotation? I may have. That's right. I made him our long reliever with the addition of Merrill Kelly to the to the uh, rotation. Okay. Well, if Frankie can figure it out in the bullpen, we're going to have a really nice long reliever. He's been shelled this year. I think it was just clear that being a starter on this team was not going to be what was right for him. Peyton Wilson no longer injured. Yeah, Peyton Wilson, of course. That's a guy. And we have rattled off six in a row. Frankie Montas with another win. This guy's dealing. Love to see it. Merrill Kelly's brought his ERA down to 3.03. Love to see that. And we will get a moment here. Merrill Kelly with the shutout. Now, it hasn't been easy going. Eight hits, two walks. Has punched out eight, though. He'll face Matt Mervis, the former Cubs prospect. And we'll see if Merrill Kelly can keep this shutout alive. Keep this win streak for Kansas City alive. Top eight. Massive spot. If you can get Mervis out, we're going to be killing it. Now, we are up seven. Don't get me wrong. But you don't want to let them come back. A three-run home run, obviously. And that could make it a game. That knocks Kelly out of the game. Then you get the bullpen. But it's a three-pitch strikeout. Mervis goes down. And we continue to go up and up and up. Merrill Kelly is relieved by Jonathan Luizaga. And that is an 8-0 win.
with home runs from Freddie Fermin, Bobby Witt Jr., and two from Nolan Gorman. Freddie Fermin, player of the game with two extra base hits. Five RBIs. What a beast. And suddenly we are 30 games above 500. 82 and 52. And now Vinny Pasquantino is injured. Bruised foot. Well, we're going to keep him active. And we win again. One, two, three. That's going to be six, seven, eight in a row to end August. We are 9-1 and one in our last 10. Vinny Pasquantino, of course, to the bench. Our first baseman is Logan Porter. No. How did he even get called up? That's what I'm wondering about. We have nobody else on the entire team that can play first base. That is actually a problem. So Nick Prado is going to get the call again. Which will mean we obviously send down Logan Porter because why is he with the major league team? Simply no idea. He's back to AAA. I don't know what they changed here. We need a first baseman now at this level. That can be Logan Porter. I have no problem with him at AAA. That's totally fine. And Nick Prado inserts at the number nine spot against righties and against lefties. Still going to need him to play. And he will still be at the very bottom of the order. It's a killer lineup, especially if MJ Melendez is raking, but he is slowing down, dare I say, significantly. And finally, a loss to open up September, but we need to add two to our lineup here. And I think this could be a good time to bring up some pitchers. Our bullpen is already stacked. I'm thinking another starter to be in this long relief spot and then another bench bat. So who are we going to call up? Starting pitcher-wise... Asa Lacy's on fire. Asa Lacy's going to come back up. I mean, he's just been dominant at AAA. Welcome back to the big leagues, Asa Lacy. And actually, we need to call Logan Porter back up. I need a backup catcher here at the major league level. So Logan Porter is actually getting the call back. And I don't know who's going to be the, our AAA first baseman. Juan Soriano, he has 21 home runs as a rookie or first-year professional ball, I should say. But does that warrant a call-up? Getting better. He's only hitting 235, though. 720 OPS. Eh, we're going to give him a chance. Juan Soriano to AAA. Wow. Top prospects have shifted a bit. Chris Bates remains the number one prospect in baseball. However, Bobby Montez is into the top 10. The 21-year-old also at AA. Continues to get better. And it's an interesting note because I did say his pitch mix suggests pitch to contact guy. Doesn't have a fastball even. But his per nines say strikeout guy. 59K per nine. So we'll see what happens with that. But that's interesting. Blake Mitchell's number 18. I thought about calling him up. He looks to be very good defensively. And he's got developing blossoming power. He continues to get better and better and better. Now, two years in our system. He might be our big league catcher next year. What else is going on? Elijah Green's number 25. He continues to struggle offensively. 742 OPS isn't terrible. You guys just can't quite see that. There you go. But uh, it's not amazing. Rhett Park is number 31. He is still at single A. I have not moved him up, but his potential is crazy good. But I just, his overall, I thought, was just too bad to start him at double A. He'll be in double A. I mean, maybe now. Maybe now's a good time at the end of the year. Juan Soriano is a top 50 prospect in baseball. Gets the promotion to AAA. Spencer Jones at 51, of course. Another Royal. He's up and down. Not hitting amazingly well. A little bit frustrating. Brett, wow, the Brewers got Chase Hampton. Yankees prospect. Morgan Gillies at 68. He's fluctuated. I thought he was... Lower than this, and then he was higher than this. The numbers are getting better, though. Again, everyone says move him to second base because of the arm. I, I feel like we don't need help in the infield. And he has the speed and defense to really monitor center field, in my opinion. So that's the plan there. Mazzucato and Cross are 75 and 76 back-to-back. -back, and Cross is getting a lot better. You know, he's somebody we could have thought about calling up. Maybe if there's an injury, 
And that is the top 100. All right, we're going to send Rhett Park to double A. See what he can do. Can he only play third base? No, he can play both corner infield spots and right field. Got big power against lefties. We'll get him in there. But CJ Alexander has crushed at double A. Well, he's a 28-year-old. Probably doesn't belong there. <laughs> but he's killing it. Red Park's going to play first base. I'll hit him second. No, I won't. Not against righties. We'll, we'll move uh, move CJ Alexander there. That makes a little bit more sense. Red Park can hit sixth. And then against lefties, he can take the place of Juan Soriano. Contact's not great, but the power is there. He's going to hit bombs. He's only 5'9", little switch hitter. He's going to hit bombs. This four-game series against the Yankees could be tough. Facing some pretty good pitchers. Clark Schmidt. Oh, no. Marcus Stroman has struggled this year. Of course, then the Tigers. And they have good pitching, but Jackson Job has struggled. He earned the call-up. Who else do they have? Reese Olsen, Casey Mize. So some, some good young arms there, but struggling. The Astros, I think, are going to be tough. The Braves are going to be tough. Orioles, of course, could be a good team. And that is three straight losses. We also need to call up a double-A arm to triple-A. Bates could definitely be uh, definitely be the one who gets the call. Uh, although I think Connie Norris probably makes more sense. Pitching better, only 24 years old. Having a great season. Has earned the promotion. Time to get Vinny Pasquantino back in the lineup, though. That's going to be a really big addition to this team. Probably go six, and then Pasquantino. Michael Garcia continues to struggle against righties. It stinks, but what am I going to do? I mean, really, he struggled a lot this entire season, which I was hoping for big things. I'm still leading him off against lefties, but I'm not sure if he's even performing that well. And finally, an opportunity to win another game. Sam Mole on the hill. Everson Pereira, Austin Wells, two top prospects for the Yankees on first and second. Both have seen major league time. Wells currently with the team, but Anthony Rizzo at the plate. He's a lefty that can hit lefties so that we don't have like an astounding great platoon advantage here. He's a lefty that uh, is capable of turning on a lefty and just smacking one out of here. He's two for three today. We got to be careful with him. I thought it said it was top 10. It's bottom eight. Where did I read top 10? Unless it's glitched out. 2-0. and oh. Did not get the call there. And now I'm officially worried. And we do, we do the thing that everyone does, which is hit Anthony Rizzo. Glaber Torres is going to pinch hit for DJ LeMayhew. And I'm going to get my closer up, probably. And maybe Phil Maton. I think maul has got to come out of this game. So we're going to Phil Maton. Get ready, ready for Glaber and Oswaldo Peraza. But unfortunately, you do have to face Alex Verdugo with the platoon advantage. Ideally, Glaber grounds out into a double play. He's extremely slow. I think it's a legitimate possibility. And maybe that two-seam fastball runs in on the hands. But Glaber elevates it a bit. We need him to get on top of the football. He's grounded out into 10 double plays this year. I need number 11. It's a good spot. Oh, Glaber gets a piece. Now, a strikeout would also be fine. That's in play. Let's try to jam him, but we can't walk him. Ground ball, pulled foul. So he's got the timing of the two-seam fastball. I don't really want to go back to a heater. I really don't. I think we're looking at a slurve away. Labor fights it off. Not in the best spot. Maybe back to the sweeping curve. Good spot on it. Labor just keeps fighting. I think now we have to go four-seamer. Try to elevate and celebrate. But Glaber takes it. And now we risk walking in a run. It would tie the ball game. We're going to the money pitch. The big sweeping curve. Glaber just continues to fight. At this point, just put it in play or don't. Strike out or hit it fair. The foul balls are going crazy. How do we get them out? Please. Ground ball, Michael Massey to win. There's one on the Pasquantino double play. The eighth is over. Glaber does not wear number 14 in real life. That's an important distinction. He wears 25, like the great Jason Giambi. They get so many numbers wrong in MLB The Show. I don't know how they managed to do it. 
It's impressive. Never have I seen a company so good at getting things wrong as Sony San Diego Studio. And Kyle Isbell continually finds himself in the two spot in the lineup. And he wasn't a pinch hit because he started the game here. Why does that happen? I do not want Kyle Isbell ever hitting second for me. I don't know why that's a thing. I mean, against lefties, I guess he has high contact. He's having a decent season. Why do they keep taking control of my lineup? It's annoying. MJ Melendez hitting fifth for us today. Why am I chasing that? Quickly 0-2. Dwayne Underwood, former Pirate, I believe, on the mound for the Yankees. And I got worried about that thing catching the zone. His ball schemes with that fastball down. I kept thinking it was going to be off the plate, and it kept catching. Tinker's a bit of a different story. Slightly different action, obviously. It's a bit of a hanger. Good timing, but a ground ball out right to Glaber Torres, inning over. And we're going to go to our closer, James MacArthur. And James, I need you to bring it home for me. It's going to be the top of the Yankee order. Verdugo. Judge. They got some tough bats. No Juan Soto. He, of course, signed with the Astros. But we're going to go right after Verdugo. You can see MacArthur there. Third in the AL in saves. And could theoretically catch up to Jansen or Kevin Kelly. Shockingly enough, if we continue to do what we're capable of. And that's rattle off a bunch of wins in a row. Can't pitch him every day. But two in a row, rest day, go again. He could pitch four or five times a week for us. And I think we'd be okay. Here's Oswald Peraza after Verdugo grounds out. And we'll just continue to lean on that sinker. Now, the four-seamer can get up around 95 miles per hour. We've blazed it past people before. But right now, we're just letting that sinker work. Peraza grounds out. And it will all be down to Aaron Judge. Having such a great season. Hitting 317. OPS over 1,000. Over 100 RBIs. Searching for his 40th home run. Just two away. Well, I don't want it to come here against MacArthur. I'll tell you that. And we're going to show a lot of respect to Aaron Judge. With that being said, can't put him on base either. Really can't. Because that is the tying run. Don't want that on base. But we also know that he can tie it up with one swing. So we do need to be very careful. Pitching him backwards. Going to go inside. Jammed him. But nobody even close. And Judge reaches to keep things alive here for the Yankees in the bottom of the ninth. Their cleanup hitter is Anthony Volpe. I think we're going to work away a lot. Slider for a strike. Maybe slightly more off the plate. That caught a little bit. But it's another strike. Now we go off the plate. Volpe doesn't chase. He's been so great in real life for the Yankees to start 2024. But chases a 12-6 in the dirt. And that is the ball game. Royals win a tight one against the Yankees. We love to see it. Fraley homers, Melendez homers, and Asa Lacy picks up the win. Wasn't pretty. Four hits, just one strikeout, three earned runs in two-thirds of an inning. But he got the win somehow. Merrill Kelly bruised ribs. He's going to be fine. He'll miss a day or two. Maybe he misses a start. But I don't even think that's going to be possible because he's going to be good to go by... Uh, the next time his rotation comes up, or his turn in the rotation comes up. Chris Bubich, shutout? Are the shutout Royals back in September? Last September, it felt like every game we were in a shutout situation. Now we could be starting it again. Chris Bubich has dominated the Bronx Bombers, but faces runners on first and second with just one out. And the top of the order waiting in the wings. Got to get through Jose Trevino. And back-to-back change-ups for strikes. Trevino being very patient. This could be a ground ball. Foul. Oh, big strike on Verdugo there. Trevino popped up. I don't know if this change-up's going to be a good pitch against Verdugo. Not really a great pitch, lefty-lefty. Might have a little bit more luck with the 12-6. Ooh, and he thought about it. Count runs full. Let's throw him a fastball. 
We do go pulse foul. Try to throw the 12-6 for a strike. There it is. Ground ball. This could be, oh, no, just going to be one. That's all we need. That's right. Trevino got out. Bubich through the eighth, and he is relieved for James MacArthur, who gets the save, as he always does. MJ Melendez with a double. We had just three hits. It's Martinez, two-run home run for the win. Let's go, JD. 10 Ks for Bubich. And now we're down by a run. Bases loaded, two outs in the eighth for Nolan Gorman. One of our best hitters. We are fifth in home runs this year. Seventh in stolen bases, middle of the pack for on base percentage. But we can certainly hit it out. Holy's a bit tough though. Tiger's closer in real life throws very hard. But that one's not very hard. It's a hanging slider down the middle. 100 miles per hour right to the center fielder for an out. Tigers keep us off the board. And we'll see if we can keep it close. Asa Lacey into the game. And we'll just try to get it, you know, keep it at one. Get it back up in the top of the ninth inning and see if the Royals' bats can come alive. Bases loaded is, you know, quite a spot to come up with no runs there. That's brutal. Mason Wynn taking off. He's got to be gunned. Here's a throw from Fermin. Got him. Tigers trade for Mason Wynn in some capacities. Not working out. He ends the inning for the Tigers. He knew it was coming too. Slide step. Just got him. But we need a run. And here comes the lefty. Who in the hell is that supposed to be? It's Tyler Holton. Well, we got five, six, and seven in the order. Would love for JD to get on. We can win this game. We've left eight on base. Pasquantino on deck. Would be lefty-lefty, but I'm comfortable with that. And that is ball four to JD Martinez. And... Yeah, I think we could bring in a pinch runner. Maybe Kyle Isbell. We don't really have a ton of speed. We'll just leave JD in the game, I guess. I mean, it's a slight upgrade from 30 to 50, but... We'll leave the bat in there in case we need it later in the game. And we might. You never know. It's If it was like up to 70 speed, okay, I would actually make the move. But it, it's only 50 speed we'd be getting up to. It's just not significant enough, I don't think. But quickly, Vinny Pasquantino is down in the count 0-2. Got to get on something here. No double play. We prefer a strikeout to a double play, obviously. That sinker down in the zone. Very lucky that that was not the double play. Because that's a double play ball. Good take. Been all inside. And then that cutter on the fifth pitch makes me worry about the outside part of the plate. But back in. Pasquantino gets wood on it. Two and two. 90 vision for Vinny Pasquantino. So he's going to be able to foul pitches off all day if we want to. And that trend will continue way out ahead of that cutter. Protecting for the fastball, obviously. We'll do the 2-2 two -two again. And it's a strikeout. Really well-located pitch. Change up down and in. You worry about that being a cutter, breaking back across. We just missed it. We brought in Kyle Isbell for Jake Fraley. It's lefties better. Change up's not going to get me twice, but with two strikes, you got to be careful. Got to be real careful with it. That could have been 0-2 pretty easily. Take one and one. Just can't turn around the fastball. Good timing on it, but just can't quite put it into play. One, two to Isbell. Does hit lefties way better than righties. Nasty pitch. Tyler Holton's just coming in and shutting it down, man. This is crazy. Two and two to Michael Garcia. Staying alive. I mean, all of these pitches are incredibly well located. Nothing is really leaked out to the middle of the plate. Holton's been exceptional. 3-2. And this is who we want to hit with right now. A gap shot might score J.D. Martinez. But a home run will definitely score him. Michael Garcia, no doubt shot to left. 3-2 and two with two out in the top of the ninth. Michael Garcia gives us the lead. Let's go, baby. 440. That was our matchup. 
It was one of our best hitters in the lineup against left-handed pitching. Freddie Fermin was coming up next. Garcia down to our final strike of the game with a monster home run to give us the lead. That's a huge moment. That is a huge moment for Michael Garcia. And I'll tell you what, it felt like a playoff moment. It felt like this is the type of team that just does not give up. They keep fighting. I know it's the Tigers in September. It's not a huge game. But it was a huge moment. Ready for me with a base knock. Will Vest comes into the game, immediately surrenders a hit, and that's the top of our lineup. Is Bobby Witt Jr. leading off today? He is, and he's two for four and could blow this thing wide open. Is he our best hitter? Maybe. Ooh, slider out in front, way out in front. Was able to sit back on it when it was inside, but breaking back across the plate. Starts to look like a fastball at first and then changes, obviously. And there's the heater. Just early on that. 0-2. Taking the lead, though, is the big thing. Bobby Witt Jr. stays alive. Two lefties to start the inning for the Tigers. Do we go to our closer? Lefty sitting just 167 against him? All right, I think I might actually have my answer. James MacArthur coming on. Lefties can't seem to hit him. 43 saves in 47 opportunities. He's been excellent. And he'll now try to end things in Detroit. It's a tough part of their lineup, 3-4-5. The only hitters that you're really even scared of. Even, I mean, Kerry Carpenter against a righty. He can mash. Oh, line out. Let's go. That would have been foul, too. But Reese, or not Reese, excuse me. Michael Garcia turns it into an out. Why was I thinking about Reese Olsen of the Tigers? Is that my fantasy team? Unfortunately, Carpenter grounds out. It'll be a very quick inning for James McArthur. Willie Adamas has some pretty big power against righties, though. Might have to worry about that, but I'm worried about MacArthur, you know, pitching as often as he is for us. That's a strike, but one and one. So I'm trying to make this a pretty quick inning. Under 10 pitches would be excellent. He's at six right now. Big swing and a miss from Adamas. And we'll see if we can punch out Javi Baez Jr. Ground ball at Bobby Witt Jr. And that's the ball game. Royals win again. Another close one, but the heart, the resilience of this team, we get it done. Better win for Asa Lacy this time around. Goes two innings, three hits, no earned runs, no strikeouts, don't care. And outs and out. Vinny Pasquantino could hit for the cycle. We're up 15 to 2. A seven run third inning. We are destroying the Tigers, but the Pasquatch doesn't have great speed, needs a triple. That is possible here at Comerica. Not many other places would you think about the possibility of a triple for Pasquantino. Really needs something deep to the gap. And that's hitting the right spot, just way too low. You need, instead of a negative 10 degree launch angle, maybe a 10 degree launch angle. And that could have been three. Up 16-2 now. This is surely going to be the last AB for Pasquantino. Something super deep to right center is probably our only chance. Ooh, that's a strike. That's a tough strike, too. All of these pitchers love to go fastball down and into me on this zoom camera. Very tough. See, that's a strike. Chopper. Another ground ball double play for Pasquantino. Tough way to end it, but it's 17-2. Pasquantino does not get credit for the RBI. That's your final. Mark, uh, Michael Garcia, four for five with three doubles. Velazquez, two for four with a homer. Logan Porter goes four for six. What was this game? Bobby Witt Jr. with just one hit. Fraley hitting second with a hit. MJ Melendez goes two for six. No ribbies, though. Home runs for Velazquez and Pasquantino. Doubles for Vinny Pasquantino, of course. And Michael Garcia, who had three. Insanity. Also, Merrill Kelly getting a save. A three-inning save. Of course, it would have to be in a 17-2 spot. You can go three innings out of the bullpen and get a save. If you did not know, if you finished the game. But, um... Yeah, I think we gotta get him back in the rotation. 
What are you doing in the bullpen, Merrill? Multiple losses in a row. We're back up. Bottom seven. No outs. We're down by two. The bases are loaded for Nolan Gorman. It's a four-run seventh for the Astros. Gorman not only could put us back in this game, he could hit his third home run of the game. The rookie's a bit tough. He's a lefty, kind of gangly. He's got a pretty hard sinker. And that can be a tough pitch to hit. Especially lefty-lefty. Slider is at primary pitch. We'll see if we can find something to hit. Double play would be tough. Anything else is pretty good. As long as we stay out of the double play, we can bring it back to within one. Sack fly would be perfect as well. Maybe not perfect. A home run would be perfect. This one hit fairly well to deep left, but track down. Second and third will advance. It's an RBI for Gorman. And we should be able to at least tie this thing up. And maybe we did. Melendez RBI single. Pasquantino RBI single. And then the Astros take the lead right back. And now we have to face Josh Hader. Astros closer. Come on, Nolan. Tough matchup here, lefty-lefty, against Josh Hader. Change up up in the zone like that. Not exactly what you're sitting on. Thought that'd be a fastball up and out of the zone. There's a fastball. Gets in on you pretty quick at 98 with that weird, you know, delivery. He's so deceptive, hides the ball for so long. One, two, worried about a strikeout slider here. Wipe out. Tight pitch. Two and two. To the changeup. And that's a good pitch to hit. Gorman a little bit late on that heater. Hit again fairly well. Diving effort, not caught. Gorman racing for third. Can he get there? Here's a throw. Gorman is headed for home. What's happening? I didn't send him home. It's a triple for Nolan Gorman. We take the lead. And we eventually win the game 11-10. Gorman two home runs and a triple. Pasquantino three for four home run. Garcia two for five with a homer. Doesn't end up hurting us. I don't know why he went home. I know left stick up in that situation would be go home. I'm pretty certain I didn't touch it. But maybe there was input lag and it tracked over from when I was trying to round second. I didn't try to get inside the parker there. I promise. You lose again. I mean, September has been very up and down for us. Three losses in a row. Four wins in a row. Two losses in a row. Trying to get it going again. But we're so up and down right now. Melendez, 15-game hit streak on the line. See if we can keep it alive. We got to be able to hit Yency Almonte, right? Surely. Former Dodger reliever. Melendez averaged down to 314. OPS well under 1,000. Well under. 965 now. He's really been cold here late in the year. But to be fair, how... how you know, can he really stay hot for this long? Uh, it's another win. Bobby Witt, three for four of the homer. Garcia's starting to hit bombs. I feel like every game we've played, he's hit a home run in lately. Bubich with another shutout. It is the White Sox, though. It, like, barely counts, but we'll try and finish it. Good curveball. Bubich gets Colton Wong looking. And I'll tell you, I know this is going to be a hot take. People will disagree with me. I'm ready for that. It's just going to be one of those things. I don't like these White Sox uniforms. They're the City Connect. Everyone loves them. I don't like black baseball pants, first of all. I think they're fine. I don't think they're amazing. Everyone seems to love these things. I'm not about them. Fastball. Give me a call, Blue. Down to three balls here. A lot of foul balls. That's going to be a single, and that's going to be the shutout over with. Only 29 speed, but that will be a run. And Bubich, he might get yanked here pretty soon. There it is. But another win for our Royals. Fraley with a homer. Love to see it. White Sox made it close in the end, but couldn't pull it out. J.D. Martinez bruised arm. Okay. Bobby Witt Jr. has three home runs today? Well... I mean, in a, in a race for MVP, Bobby Witt Jr. may have emerged. 
I mean, three home runs in a game is absolutely out of control. That's a nuts performance. With the rain coming down, and if you look at his season stats here, 32 home runs. I mean, that, that's that's pretty incredible. And could he possibly end up with 40? Seems insane. Oh my goodness, that's a fastball right down the middle. Not ready for it. Got one more chance here. It's Joe Barlow. Be ready for it this time. Ah, that's what a wasted opportunity. A little early that time. Wasn't going to get beat by it. What if I tried my actual hitting settings here for a minute? Oh, the PCI is so small. All right, this is tough for the first uh, swing of the day there. 1 2 against Joe Barlow. Come on, Bobby. No, just missed. Man, Legend's tough. Bobby Witt Jr., three homers. Fraley got one. Velasquez with one. I really wanted number four. Trust me. Couldn't get it done. And we have somehow brought it back. We are just half a game back of the Minnesota Twins. Would love to play them at the end of the year. But unfortunately, we don't get a chance. But we need to stop losing. Storm Chasers, our AAA team, did not make the postseason. But our AA team did and I do want to jump in here. I want to be a little bit more prospect focused. And if you look at double A, you know, our pitchers. What did I just do? No! How did I simulate the season? Only a couple games but that I, I, I tried to jump into the game. I don't know how I just simulated everything. Well, we made the playoffs. 96 and 66. I didn't realize the playoff games were at the end of the whole week. I, I just I didn't I just didn't realize it. I thought they'd be right then. Oh my goodness. Well, we didn't end up winning the division. Twins got the two seed. Oh man. But we got a got a wild card spot. We finished with the same record. The Twins got the two seed, and we got, what, the four seed? It's not so bad, but we need to play the Astros now. And I don't love that. Don't love that matchup. Well, we're going to end this episode with Chris Bates. Morgan Gilly hitting in the three spot here. But Chris Bates making a postseason start for your Northwest Arkansas Naturals. 41 and 28 was good enough to make the playoffs. We're facing TJ Schofield Sam, a legend of the series. Max Muncy, of course, the A's prospect Max Muncy, not the Dodgers player Max Muncy. Both were in the A's organization, although not at the same time. Both share a birthday. Very interesting. But we'll see what Chris Bates can do. Of course, was very good in his first year. His attributes are looking pretty nice. Up to a 69 overall. Very nice. Hit per 967. K per 961. So he is getting better. I wish I would show you the, the plus or minus there for each attribute in the game. They don't. But we know Chris Bates can pitch. He is the number one prospect in all of baseball. And I'm looking for a big postseason debut. Chris Bates, are you my future ace? Maybe so. He can field his position. We're finding that out. Big out number one. And last time we used Chris Bates, it was pretty great. Great Bates. Could be a nickname. I'm sure you guys would prefer the Master Bates, sir. Master Bates. Yep. All right, well. <laughs> last time we used him, the changeup was great. The changeup was like his money pitch. Nobody could hit it. I think we might try and lean on that again. Slider's nasty as well. Strikeout. Errol Robinson back to the bench. And I do want Chris Bates to start being a strikeout guy. He's got the stuff. The per nines are looking like he could be a masterful strikeout pitcher. I'd love to see it. Changeup's actually hit very hard to left field. You can hear it's just a different sound off the bat. Makes the left fielder back to the track, but he makes the catch. Here's Max Muncy, who we talked about. Now, that fastball keeps leaking down the middle. That's a mistake. This one's hit very well, and that's out of here. Max Muncy has taken us deep. 
It's a fastball that leaked down the middle. Not really a mistake you can make. We'll take another look at this location. It's right down the middle. You just can't do that. And that's why he's a prospect. He's just 18 years old. There's still a lot of development to be done. But you need to locate a little bit better than that. That's that's not doing it. That's not exactly bouncing back with location there. That is the way better pitch. Curveball, strike three. Beautiful pitch from Bates. The off-speed stuff is really working. Is the fastball going to be able to get out major league hitters? That's going to be the big question. Can the fastball play against major leaguers? It's at 94, 95. I went at just 92. It's a swing and a miss, and that really sets up the slider. You know, fastball down, a slider down. Or 12-6 in the dirt. I mean, either of these should be good pitches following that fastball down, but been a pretty good at bat here from Thomas. He's not biting. Gonna go upstairs. It's the same pitch that got hit out from Max Muncy. And we need our hitters to do something. We got to pop up on that last batter. But we need our hitters to give us a chance to win the game. Because if Bates comes out and he allows a solo shot and that's it, you know, for the damage, we got to be able to win the game if he goes out and does that and just shoves. Another strikeout. That's number three, I believe. And I think he's gotten one on every pitch except the fastball. Change up, 12-6. And the slider, I think, are his three strikeouts so far. So I think we're trying to pitch backwards a little bit here and maybe set up that fastball. He's looking heater. Change up is taken. And that change up is hit very hard. It's just right down the middle. Can't really make that mistake. Fastball down. It'll be a base hit. Does this score a runner? Here's the throw. Play at the plate. Up the first baseline to nothing. Rockhounds take the lead and have now extended it. As Chris Bates has been anything but perfect today. Change up, strike three. Robinson sat down, punched out again. That's four strikeouts now for Bates. It's just a couple of his mistakes have been hammered. That's it. Fastball got up to 96 that time. Miguel Andujar, the fact that he's in the double-A playoffs right now, it's got to be illegal. He's 30. Retire. Got a ground ball and the changeup. And that is top half of the third over. Down by two. You're going to have bumps in the road. You know, he's a top prospect, number one pitching prospect in baseball, but that doesn't mean it's going to be a perfect game every time he comes out in double A as an 18-year-old. It's already extremely impressive. He's even at this level. Just got to keep it up. And maybe a run would be nice. Bates is Muncy 0-2. Catcher looking for another fastball. Elevate this one a bit. Muncy somehow gets a piece of it. I mean, clearly looking heater. Let's go with the slider. Try to punch him out. Good location, but Muncy stays alive. And I think now is when we go back to the changeup. Catcher wants the heater. No. Listen to me. Idiot. Strike three. Bates avenges the home run, I guess. 0-2 to Ironman. And he strikes out as well. Love it. Bates getting in a groove. Still no runs for the Naturals. And I'll tell you, the big difference here for Bates is when we can get the first pitch fastball in there, it sets up the entire rest of the AB. And that's been our, our one concern so far. Is, you know, if they swing at the fastball, it can get crushed. So we'll see, you know, what the future is like for Bates. But obviously some things to like. I need the fastball to be a little bit faster. If he can get up to 97, we might have something. But 92 to 95, the occasional 96. I just don't know that that's good enough. Lasco's really fighting here. Bates pitch count is going to be at 65 after this. And no one's chasing the fastball up. Can't really blow it by anybody. The slider's not really getting a ton of chases either in the spots where I would like it to. I don't really know that that's a pitch I'm just going to throw under the zone. Like, 
This might be the best place to throw it. In real life, you're kind of aiming for that back foot in a way. And that doesn't really seem to get a lot of swings and misses here in the game. 3-1 to Lazaro Armenteros. Probably sitting heater. We're not going to give him one. Way out in front of the changeup. And I think you almost go back to it after that swing. I think you have to. Maybe, maybe spot it away, though. Three straight change-ups. I don't want to give him what he's looking for. And maybe he adjusted. Diving stop by the shortstop. Great throw. Got him at first. Web gem from Gerard Gonzalez. What a play. I mean, that is way in the gap. Gonzalez lays out, gets up, throws a bullet to first. What a play. But I'll tell you, the bats are doing nothing. Here's Errol Robinson. Struck out twice now. Finally puts one in play and gets a hit. Sitting first pitch changeup. Wild stuff there from Errol Robinson. That's maybe why we struck him out twice. But you know what? He, he made it happen. Good for him. I think we're probably about 90% first pitch fastball. And he just happens to be sitting change up. And that's back-to-back -back hits. And the end may be near. Here might be a play at third base. Laser beam from left. Not in time. What a tag. Who's playing third base? How do we not get an out there? I mean, it's hit fairly hard, right? But that horrendous tag from Alexander. Tyler Alexander. I mean, you couldn't have made that look worse. I would say, Bates, hey, try to keep us in it, but I don't think 2 nothing is in it. Our bats are dead. Simply can't do anything. We're actually going to waste this changeup. I don't really like the lefty-lefty changeup. I prefer the 12-6, I think. It's not locating it well. Location's starting to leave a little bit. Yeah, it's becoming a little bit more difficult to locate now. Bates is what? 84 pitches in. This is number 85. Becoming a little bit more difficult to throw these where we want. Gotta try that slider. Good spot on it. Got him. Big punch out of Schofield Sam. And that is all for Chris Bates. Nathan Lavender will relieve him. And the Rockhounds win. We brought it back to one run. But unfortunately, didn't have enough. Five hits for Bates, including a home run. Two earned runs. Struck out seven. In a pretty good start, but the bats. Useless. Tough loss. I thought Bates pitched pretty well. Again, just a couple mistakes. And the Rockhounds didn't miss him. Wish I could say the same for our bats. But they missed about everything they saw. That will be the episode, though. We've made the playoffs. And that will be the next episode. First time making the playoffs in this series. Royals and... Astros. We will face Hunter Brown. We will face Framber Valdez and Christian Javier. First to two wins. I would like to not even see Javier. Let's just go 2-0 and, and not 0-2. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.